we're going to go to the Big Lyrics layout and click Edit Layout. Then we're going to select the Document Viewer and click its Options button in the top right corner. And here we'll see a new option to set the content to either one column or two columns. We'll select two columns. And now we see our lyrics split into two columns. And they scroll continuously, so the bottom of the left column is the same as the top of the right column at all times. This same feature works for documents. And again, the document scrolls continuously. Usually with documents, though, you want to use this feature to see two pages at a time. And that works best if you click the Document Tools button and select Fit to Height. And then the app will size the document viewer to the height of one page of the document. So you have two pages side by side. We're going to edit the song and scroll down to the Lyrics field. And I'm going to click in the first line of lyrics and click the new Marker button, which is at the right end of the formatting toolbar. I'll get a prompt to enter a name for the marker, and I'll enter verse 1. Then I'll go to the next verse, verse 2. And now I see my marker symbols in the lyrics. But what I can do now is use any page function, like the hotspots or a foot switch, and when I click the next page function, instead of scrolling down by one screenful, it just jumps to the next marker. You can also add markers to documents, but this works a little differently. Let's show a document. And what we need to do now is scroll to the position where we want to add a marker. Just drag your finger to manually scroll. Then click the Document Tools button and click Add a Marker. You'll be prompted for a name again, so let's enter verse 1. And you see the marker gets added to the left margin. And now I can use the page functions to jump to the markers. I'm just tapping the bottom hotspot here to jump from one marker to the next. Now these markers are really powerful with the addition of a new layout item that's available. So now it's really easy to jump from one marker to another based on the names. Documents works the same way. All I need to do to highlight a line of lyrics is double click in the left half of the line and it will get a blue background and jump to the center of the lyrics viewer. Double click the next line and it jumps to the center. This is not super useful on its own, but in conjunction with an automation track, you can build your own karaoke style display. We can now assign separate actions to the song selection and the song second selection. It used to be all or nothing, but now we can split up our actions between these two triggers. I'm also going to select song list show hide and assign it to the two fingered tap action. And instead of hunting for the song list button, I can just Tap anywhere on the screen with two fingers, and the song list appears. I can tap again to dismiss it. Now when you click the document viewer or the song list item in the layout editor and click its options button, there's a button move to back. And this just pushes the item behind all the others, so then you can select another layer that might have been under it. And similarly, sometimes you want to place an item on top of another large item, especially the document viewer and you used to need an empty area of the layout to click to add a new item. So now if you select the document viewer and click its options button, you'll see the option add overlapping item. And if you click that, the pop-up menu appears to add a new item just as if you had clicked an empty part of the layout. So let's select an automation button here and we can place it on top of our document viewer. So here's a song with four recordings. There's only room to see three at a time but I can just scroll down with my fingers to see all the contents. You can now put any text inside the square brackets, not just chords, and the app will position them the same way. So you can see here in the second to last verse, I wrote a direction stop at the beginning of the verse. And the other change is that I can now click the Document Tools button, and I can select Hide Bracketed Chords, and everything in brackets just goes away. If you view a break, and you have a break length defined, a countdown timer will appear as soon as you select the break, and if it gets to zero, it'll turn red and start counting backwards. If you're editing a song now, you can scroll down by the lyrics field, and there's a button to search the web for lyrics. And then there's another button to search for song facts, so if you're looking for interesting tidbits about a song to help introduce it, that should help there. A smart copy is a new copy of a song that's linked to the original and inherits information from the original unless you override it. I'm going to click the copy button at the bottom of the screen and select Smart Copy. And you'll see that now all the fields in the song are faded out. And this indicates that they're now pulling this data from the original song. 
But if I edit any of the fields, the fields I edited now become active to show that this is unique information that I've added to the smart copy. So I'm going to enter a notation here in the capo custom field. Change the key and transpose the chords to the key that I'm going to play with my capo on. And so now these are the only fields that are highlighted in the smart copy. Everything else is coming from the original. Once I add this song, I look at the song list and I see my original song and then under it, indented, is my smart copy. If I make an edit in the original, you'll see that that edit carries down to the smart copy. But of course, edits I make in the smart copy don't affect the original. At the top of the list, you can click the search button to open the list filters. And there's a new filter to hide smart copies. And all the list filters are now changed so that if you close the filters panel, the filters you set will still remain active. The search button will highlight in orange to remind you that you're filtering your list. To remove the filter, you can open the filter panel again and undo it, or you can just double-click the search button and all the filters will be reset to their defaults. We have the new song list scroll up and song list scroll down actions. I'm going to assign those to the MIDI controller messages that my foot switch sends. And you can't see this in the screen demo, but now I'm pushing the two buttons on my foot switch. And if I have multiple MIDI presets attached to a song and I line them up in the order I'm going to use them in a song, I can now use a single foot switch button to step through those and then jump to the next song when I get to the last preset. Now you can assign presets to a layout. So I'm going to edit this layout, go to the edit details, and down at the bottom I see an option to select MIDI presets. And these are for general MIDI presets that I want to access from any song. And now these three presets appear as if they're attached to every song. They're not really, but I see them in the same place I would see presets that are attached to the songs. These are called layout MIDI presets and I can access them with the buttons on the screen or with the foot switch, just like with the song specific preset. And if needed, I also have new remote control actions to trigger them, so I can map a specific foot switch button to a specific preset. One more MIDI function is the ability to set up two MIDI presets that work together as a pair, usually for an on-off function. I'll go back to my overdrive on, the first preset, and at the bottom I see an option to pair with a preset, and I'll select overdrive off. So now these two presets are linked together. And when I select that preset the first time, it's going to send the overdrive on message, and the highlight is going to stay on. And then if I select that preset a second time, it's going to send the off message. 